Well, it's an exciting time of the year. Here we are, mid to late August. We're out checking cameras that have been rolling now for about a month. I don't put cell cams up till closer to the season. And generally, this time of the year, when it's just inventory, I do non-cell cameras because I don't want to burn cell power, I don't want to burn battery power, and uh, we let them go about a month and then check them. So we're, uh, we're changing some cards out. We're going to look at some food plots, some stuff we planted, some stuff we chose not to plant, some grass we burnt this past spring, and uh, we'll just give you a little farm tour here this morning while we're looking. And before it's over with, we're going to the great state of Missouri, late season last year, a hunt that did not get seen last year, and it's a giant for the state of Missouri. Perry and Wade are down there. Perry kills the biggest buck of his life, and I mean it's an old, old monster deer. So all that coming at you here on Deer Season 24, and uh, the season's just around the corner. You're gonna watch this, see that big deer, see all the plans, and get fired up to get in a tree stand. You know, if you look at this field off to my left, it's a field that's prepped, and all of our other fields have germinated, and they look great. This is a bottom field, and based on the soil test, probably the best dirt we have. And last year, we planted in early August, and we had great deer activity, and then all of a sudden, boom, those plants outgrew palatability. They got really tall. It was a radish field, and the deer usage just went down dramatically. So this year, intentionally, because the dirt was so good, we held off on when we planted this one. Our plant date for everything else was mid-August. We're holding this off to late August, early September, in hopes that those plants will be young and green and growing. We had a major storm coming, so we went ahead and put most of the plots in, but this one we held off specifically. It's in a great spot. It's right next to the Buck Hotel. We've killed big deer here in the past, but we want these plants intentionally a little bit shorter, so we're planting to palatability. Well, behind me, you see some warm season grasses, and we probably planted this, I'm gonna say 12 or 13 years ago, and this spring, in one of our turkey season 24 episodes, we actually did a burn on this entire farm. So we've got a variety of different goals in mind whenever we do a controlled burn. Um, this particular farm is CRP, so Conservation Reserve, and within that particular program, there's a, a set aside time that they want you to come in and burn it. It's called mid-contract maintenance. So that's what we're going to do with this particular farm. It's, it falls sometime between years three and five. And um, so we're going to come in and get rid of all this cover that's been here three or four years. And I like to burn in the spring. And one of the reasons I like to do that is I like the cool season grass to already germinate, which you can see out here amongst the warm season grass, you've got cool season sprouts coming on. So we're gonna come in here, get a hot fire going, and then really set this cool season back, which allows this seed bed to then explode with warm season grasses. So the habitat here is gonna be deluxe. Uh, it's been in warm season grass now for probably close to 15 years. It's still a great stand and it's gonna get even better after we burn it. This will probably be the fourth time this has been burned since we planted it and it's still doing very, very well. There's maintenance with everything, whether it be a clover field, a green field in the fall, or warm season grasses. You've gotta get that old cover off of there and let that new uh, seed bed explode. Look how high that is. You know, we're gonna go check things out. And I talked about safety first when it comes to fire. And we do some small burns, but when it comes to a big project like this, I uh, enlisted the help of some gentlemen out of Kansas City that are all firefighters, either retired or current. And uh, this is what they do in their spare time. They do a lot of controlled burns. They know what they're doing. And uh, we just feel safer having the right guys that know what they're doing in place on a big project like this.
lot of good after uh, after this day, that's for sure. Well, and I talked about safety first, getting these guys to come up and help us, and they just know what they're doing. Back burning it, then, you know, lighting the front, and causing the, just unbelievable that they did the same thing here where the fire meets in the middle and it creates its own energy. It's, it's pretty awesome. It's a big project, and I really, really appreciate those guys. They're very, very good at what they do. Absolutely. It's, uh goes a long way with someone that has that much knowledge on the fire. Exactly. And safety is key and that's exactly why we're letting it be in their hands. <laughs> we're about finished with everything. We'll uh, we'll take some final drone shots once we get everything burned and show you the results. Hopefully show you some big bucks from here next fall. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe even a turkey on a burn. Yeah, <laughs> true. It was pretty awesome how well that burn went that day and this farm had not been burned in a few years, so we wanted to go in there and remove all of that thatch and all of that growth and look at the results. And this whole farm looks like that. It's a rather open farm. Uh, I've got a big bottom field with food in it, so I wanted to increase the cover on this farm, and there's nothing, in my opinion, that handles increasing cover in an open field like warm season grasses, but just check out how good this turned out. A lot of this that you see here is big blue, and then there's some little blue out in it as well, the shorter stuff. And there's also a variety of switch in here as well. But this stuff just turned out awesome. And one thing I like, I like diversity within a warm season grass field, because if you have too much of one and, and switch is one thing that ends up being really, really tight for a deer. If you plant 100% switch, a lot of times it's so thick the deer don't use it. And you see here, this is tight, it's cover, but they can also see, they feel comfortable within it. So I like a little diversity within my warm season grass stands. I like 25% big blue, 25% Indian grass, 25% side oats gamma, and 25% cave and rock switch. That mix grows well here in the Midwest, but you can work with your local FSA office if it's a, an actual CRP program, and they can help you determine which grasses work best for your soil type or whatever's on your farm. But if you're just going in without CRP and you can make your own choice, that mixture has worked well for us in the past. But I am just excited with the results. It's always fun. It's slow to come out after that burn, but boy, we had some rains this summer and I mean, it blew it up. It's just awesome in here. This episode of DOD TV is brought to you by Hawk, designed for those who push their limits to hunt stronger, safer, and smarter. Hunt from above. You can see we've got great germination and that's, that's exciting on a new plot. This plot, this was all timber right here. And I can't tell you how many times we've worked turkeys here, killed turkeys, but it was kind of open trees. And at the south end of this big timber block, and I, I mentioned to Jared whose farm this is, I said, man, there would be one heck of a, of a field up on that ridge plot because it's kind of flat up there if we did a green field. So with only taking out a handful of trees, we were able to put in probably mm, close to an acre green field here. We also buffered it right here is a big cornfield. On the other side of this cornfield is a warm season grasses field. So blind's gonna go right here. We left this tree in place, as you can see why. This is gonna be scraped central this coming year, I think. And there's big water off here to the west, big cover to the, to the north and east, and we're pretty excited about this particular spot. I'll tell you what else is gonna be exciting is the hunt we're about to show you. Mr. Batten, down in Missouri, getting it done. Big giant deer, history with pictures. He's at least six or seven. Perry and Wade are going in there in Missouri, and uh, this one's one for the ages. Congrats to those guys. Great footage, great shot. Well, it is the first hunt of 2024. We rang in the new year last night. Got Wade behind the camera tonight. It's still alternative season here in Missouri. We got the orange on. We're going into a field we've killed a lot of deer in the years past, so targeting one giant eight pointer with a split G2. These uh, big mature deer, so see what happens. Beautiful evening, pressure finally rose. It's 30.3 this evening. Sun shining, we ain't seen that in a few days. It's been really cloudy, just slow deer movement. So I'm gonna go to a big mossy oak biologic glass pipe field. So sun shining, beautiful day. Me and Wade might have a headache, but we're gonna go shoot one. Okay. 
the tradition is nitro fire loaded with that 120 grain fire stick beautiful last bite filled in front of us here in missouri for alternative season good weather high pressure sunshine today it's been cloudy so we are here we're set up and ready we'll see what happens hopefully the big deer we're in here after a big mature eight point got a split g2 on his one side so hopefully shows up tonight he's a nice deer with any luck the deer we're after will come but that's a beautiful four-year-old for here in Missouri. Missouri nitro fire on a giant. That's probably my biggest Missouri deer I've ever killed, if I had to guess. That thing is a hammer. Yeah, those, those were coming. Yeah. Like, it's now or never. It's an hour never. We had, I don't know, 10, 10 does here in Missouri. Nervous. It's late season. It's, well, January 1st of 2024. We just put that nitro fire to work. I heard the bullet yeah, smack it. Yeah. yeah. But, oh, dude, thank you. That's a, that's a six and a half year old plus hammer in Missouri. And I'm pretty sure we just got it done here late season. Whew, I'm shaking, buddy. <laughs> it's always nerve wracking when you get all those deer in the field and you gotta open the windows. We almost had a doe get me when I opened the front window, but he was, I don't know, 70 yards and we had to get it open, get the gun out and get it, get it on him. And, Wade was like, oh, wait a second. I sat back down, got the gun on him, was solid as a rock, and I think we just killed a giant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. 
that tradition's Nitro Fire never gets old. I killed one in Iowa, uh, early Muzz, and now here in Missouri for alternative season. So, man, what a, that was awesome. Yeah. We uh, reviewed the hit, looks good. It looks right in the shoulder. We heard the bullet hit him like a ton of bricks. That bleed bullet always does very well. So we still got daylight. We're gonna get down and hopefully find this big mature Missouri giant. I mean, what a late season hunt we just had. Hopefully gonna go take up the blood trail. Find this big joker here in Missouri. Well, here we sit, uh, January 1st of 2024. What a way to ring in the new year. I got Wade behind the camera. We don't get to hunt a lot together because we're normally filming Mark or filming other people, but we came down to Missouri this evening with the uh, Traditions Nitro Fire, and uh, what a beautiful evening we had. I mean, we saw 15 does and one other nice buck, and then this was the guy we were after. Came out to the biologic last bite and just worked it perfectly and uh, made a 70 yard shot with that nitro fire and 100% uh, the one of the oldest deer and probably the biggest deer I've ever killed in Missouri and I mean what a stud what a beautiful deer what a way to ring in 2024 and uh, I couldn't thank everybody enough at the, on the team the jury team what amazing people that uh, allow us to get to sit behind deer like this every day of our jobs and our lives that we get to do so what a uh, what an evening I, I'm speechless we're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DOD TV is brought to you by DeerCast, the most advanced deer movement predictor ever.